Hi, and welcome to Jules Voto's Photo Focus. In this video, I'm going to talk about a subject that you really don't hear that much about, lens shades, also known as lens hoods. They're interchangeable. Um, I'm going to refer to them as lens shades throughout the course of this video. But again, a lens hood is the exact same thing, and a lot of times you'll hear them referred to as lens hoods. The main purpose of a lens shade is to eliminate flare or lessen flare when shooting into the sun in a backlit situation. Uh, for example, let's say you're shooting a landscape and the sun is just out of the frame. Well, a lens shade is going to keep the sun's rays from striking that front element and causing flare. Also, in a, let's say a portrait situation where, the sun, where, you want, where it's backlit and you want that nice highlight on the uh, subject's hair, uh, again, the sun just out of the frame is going to cause flare. It's going to lower contrast. So uh, it al also could happen indoors with indoor lighting. If you have bright indoor lighting, and again, the light source is just outside the frame, uh, a lens shade will help to cut down on flare. Now, today's lenses are much better coated than the lenses from the 50s. 60s and even multi-coated lenses from the 70s. Today's lenses have uh, fantastic coatings and a lens hood is actually more important on those older lenses but still uh, it's definitely going to cut down on flare and give you a better contrast even with the great coatings on today's lenses so I recommend that you always use a lens shade. Now that's not the only reason to use a lens shade. Uh, with the shade on the lens you're shooting, let's say, in the rain, shade's going to keep raindrops from hitting that front element. In the snow, the same thing. Also, it offers protection to the lens. Uh, if you have a couple cameras around your neck, uh, one bumps into the other, it's a lot better that that other camera bumps into, with the, sh into the shade rather than that front element or that expensive filter that you have on the front of your lens. Also, um, you may be carrying the camera on your shoulder and you bump into something, a corner of a table, for example. Again, that shade is going to protect the lens. Also, if you happen to unfortunately drop a lens, again, that shade can offer some protection and absorb a lot of the force of that fall. And it's a lot better to replace a 20 or 30 or whatever $40 lens shade than to uh, have to replace the lens. Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about different types of lens shades and specifically about Nikon. Now today, with most lenses you will buy from most manufacturers, they include a lens shade. That wasn't always the case. Um, Nikon manual focus lenses back in the 60s and 70s uh, up to around 55, 58 millimeter did not come with shades. You had to go out and purchase one separately. And they came in several different varieties depending on the lens. For example, this is an HS2, which is a snap-on shade. Snaps onto the front of the lens. And um, here we go. This is actually an HS1 for the 51.4. The HS2 is for the 52.0. They're, they're very similar. The HS1 is a little bit wider. So anyway, it just basically, there's two little buttons here. You press those in and it snaps right on. Um, they also had screw-in shades. Okay, here is a rubber screw-in shade for the 55, no, yes, the 55 1.2. Again, this came in several varieties for various lenses. Um, I'm going to get back to the rubber shade in a few minutes. But also some lenses came with a built-in shade. Okay, and the built-in shade just slid out and you just turned it a little to lock it in place. Very convenient. Didn't need a separate shade. Makes the lens more compact when you retract it. Um, if you need to change a filter, you just push the shade in and replace your filter, change your filter. Here is the shade for the 135 millimeter 3.5 Nikkor lens, okay? And it offers much more protection 
than the built-in shade on the 135 2.8. Now we could retract this shade and attach the shade for the 135 3.5 and that gives us more protection. Now when you do this, when you, lose, when you attach a shade that's not the recommended shade or the dedicated shade for a particular lens, uh, you want to make sure you're not getting vignetting. If the, if the shade extends too much, you're going to get dark corners. And the way to test for that is mount the lens on your camera, stop it down to its smallest aperture, in this case it will be f22, aim it at a clear sky or just a, clear, a light colored wall with even lighting, and press the depth of field button, and then look at the corners. If the corners don't appear dark, then that shade would probably work with that particular lens. Now zoom lenses are a little different. Um, you want to test that particular shade at the widest setting because you're going to get more vignetting at a wider setting than at a longer setting. Usually with telephoto lenses almost any longer shade will work but again test it before you go out and actually take pictures. Now um, so in those days shades were usually in the, in the 60s into the 70s Shades for Nikon and most other camera manufacturers, at least 35 millimeter cameras, they were screw in or snap on or sometimes slip on shades. Um, in the 80s, Nikon with their autofocus cameras uh, went to bayonet mount shades. So this is a 35 2.8 autofocus lens. And instead of the shade screwing in to the front element or into the filter that you had attached uh, or snapping on, it simply bayoneted on to the outer barrel of the lens. So advantage of that, one, it's very quick, quicker than screwing a shade on. Also, if you did, if you're using a wider lens, a wider setting on a zoom, and you could usually get away with stacking a couple filters if, if need be, where if you had it mounted directly to the filter, now that shade's going to extend a little more and you're more likely to get vignetting. So um, most lenses today, uh, all the Nikon Z mount lenses, all have bayonet shades. And this uh, is the 28 to 72.8 and um, it just bayonets on, making it much easier to put the shade on and off. Uh, all right, you say, well, the snap-on shades are easy. True, they were easy to put on. However, used to run into a problem with the snap-on shades. Sometimes if one of these little buttons here got caught on something, the shade would pop off. Also, another thing, the older shades were almost all made of metal, except for those rubber shades I spoke about briefly. Uh, the new shades are all plastic. Okay, so back to the rubber shade. Let's say you want to shoot, you're in an aquarium or at the zoo and, and you want to shoot through a glass cage or, excuse me, shooting from an airplane or out through a window. With the rubber shade, you can get your lens right up to that window and just press on it so it will eliminate a lot of reflections that you normally would get from glass. So the rubber would make good contact with the glass and um, would pretty much eliminate any reflections. So that's a good reason to use rubber shades. Now, I don't know any, uh, any camera manufacturer that still manufactures rubber shades. There may be, but there are third party rubber shades. And this one actually is 82 millimeter, but you could use step down rings and uh, you know, put it on lenses with a smaller diameter. Um, nice thing about these is they're kind of adjustable. You just kind of fold them back, okay, to, for use with a wide angle lens, extend it fully for use with a longer lens. And again, as I explained earlier, just test it out, put it on your lens, have it fully extended, see if you get any vignetting by setting the aperture to the smallest and pressing your depth of field button. And as long as you're not getting any vignetting, then this is a good choice. Um, one other thing I just want to briefly talk about in relation to Nikon is their 
52 millimeter polarizing filter. Actually, there was a 62 and I believe a 72 millimeter polarizing filter. And the outer diameter on the Nikon polarizing filter, uh, in this case, this is a 52 millimeter filter, the outer uh, female diameter was about 60 millimeters. So the standard um, shade wouldn't fit. So Nikon had a two part polarizing filter, okay? Uh, excuse me, a two part polarizing lens shade. And the first part, the smaller part, worked with lenses from 35 to 55 millimeter. So you could just screw it in to the polarizing filter. And then there was an extended piece that went from 85 up to 200 millimeter. And that just screwed in to the end. And the nice part with this is with the filter, with the shade mounted, you could easily adjust the polarizer. Um, with these bayonet mount um, shades, it's a little difficult to adjust your polarizer. If you just stick your fingers in there and turn it a little bit, again, that's hard to do when looking through the lens. You maybe could use one finger and just spin that polarizer around to adjust it. Okay, so I guess that's it for lens shades. Uh, again, I think it is a very important accessory. I think you should always use one. I don't see any reason not to. You know, some people say, well, with the shade on, it makes the lens look bigger. And I'm, uh, you know, if I'm doing street photography, uh, I'm going to be more noticeable. I mean, I don't think it makes that big a difference. And I think it offers you a lot of protection, uh, mainly that um, reduction in flare or elimination of flare using a lens shade. Now, you can think of it like a sun visor in your car. You know, if you're driving and the sun is... Um, in front of you, uh, you put that uh, visor down and it's, you're going to have much better visibility. And the same thing with the lens. By using that lens shade, uh, it's going to shield your lens from those rays of the sun or a strong indoor light or whatever. And um, you're just going to get better pictures, higher contrast, and uh, again, possibly eliminate that flare. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And normally I publish a new video every Wednesday morning. However, this video will be coming out on the 22nd of December. So the next couple of weeks I have a lot going on and I probably will not publish another video till after the first of the year, possibly the second week of January. Now I'm working on a video that uh, I'm very interested to, um, to see the results. Uh, I'm doing a comparison of film versus digital. So uh, it's uh, already started working on it and uh, I will publish my results probably in my first video of the new year. If I get some time, maybe we'll see one next week or the following week, but most likely it would be uh, that second week of January. And again, at the usual time, Wednesday at 11 a.m. So thanks for watching. Happy holidays to all of you, who whatever you celebrate. Happy New Year, and I will see you in 2022.